The New Level Cap Podcast is a show about games and the people who make them. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of the New Level Cap Podcast and all things otherwise. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this brand new magnificent episode of the New Level Cap Podcast, where we have upgraded from a show about game design and all things otherwise to a show about the people behind game design. And all things otherwise, I'm your host, Marco DeSantos, also known as Mechanic Critic, and with me is the ever amazing, ever fighting, ever fleshy Matt Bittner. Uh, I am the, uh, I guess, the president of Morningstar Game Studio Incorporated and also its sole employee. Uh, I made a little game called A Robot Named Fight. Right, right. Um, would you say that you are the god king? Of Morningstar Game Studio. Uh, given that I'm the only one making games for it, yes. I, I suppose All that right. that's fair. Right. So since you're the only employee, that also implies you are the janitor of Morningstar Games. You're I, the everything. I, I am I am the janitor. I'm the everything. Except I, 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 I do take that back. Uh, my wife is uh, the lead marketer, the uh, chief marketer. We don't really have titles. But uh, she does all the uh, social media and marketing and handles a lot of a lot of that kind of thing for me. All right. All right. So we have you. We have Kayla. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience to have you on the show. But first, let's get some housekeeping out of the way. If you like the show, please share it with a friend. Give us a comment or consider subscribing to the feed. But if you absolutely hate it makes you feel terrible to your core, well, you can subject that terror to your greatest enemy by still sharing the podcast with them. (laughs) Matt, I'm really happy that you're here. So let's break the ice with a cool little nice breaker. Uh, This is a series of wonderful games that we play on this show so that we can get a little bit more comfortable, get to know you a little bit more, and see where your allegiances lie. Are you ready, Matt? Uh, Sure, yeah, let's go for it. All right, today's nice breaker is a revamp or a reprieve of last week's nice breaker. Welcome to the Dark Souls of. In the Dark Souls of, we take a random word and ask you, what's the Dark Souls of that thing? Because, you know, in the early 2000s, 2010s, and maybe even now, uh, people still continue to describe video games as the Dark Souls of whatever. So we might as well take that to its logical conclusion with this game. Matt, are you ready for your random word? Okay, let's go. What is the Dark Souls of... T-shirts? Hmm. The Dark Souls of T-shirts? Fine. Um, Interpret it as you will. I think that have to be like... Uh... One of those, like, high fashion, like, shredded t-shirts with, like, all the little cuts and the, the holes in them or whatever. Because I imagine that'd be difficult to, to get into and out of without, without tearing it up further, maybe. That's, that's, that's the best I can guess. Right, right, right. So, so Matt, here's, here's a big question, right? When, when something is the dark souls of something, it's not just that it's difficult, but also that um, the experience that you gain from it is worth that difficulty. So what makes a torn up high fashion t-shirt worth it? Oh, I didn't know that component. I, I, I'm not sure those shirts are worth it. If, uh, what, if I had to right, say right. what was worth it, maybe, maybe one of those, uh, kind of, um, knit mesh, like baseball tees from the seventies with like kind of oh, wow. the pattern collars or whatever. The, those look really nice. Uh, but they are a very delicate fabric, so so they're also easy to tear. That kind of combines the difficulty and I think think the payoff. Right, right. Because Dark Souls isn't just hard, right? It's still actually good and worth your time. <laughs> yeah, I've right, I've only right. played a little bit of Dark Souls, so it's it's. Uh, I mean, I don't have the uh, I think the skill, or maybe it's the patience. I'm not sure which to to make my way through. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it's usually patience, which is kind of ironic, uh, since you ended up designing slash making a game that is all about patience. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, it seems like you, sir, are a liar and a charlatan. Um, <laughs> but let's move on to our next segment called "Guess to Know." Uh, before we talk about what you do, Matt, it's important to understand who you are. Because at the end of the day, this podcast is about the people behind our games. So, Matt, let's ask a little bit about you. Who are you? 
like outside of being the guy who made fight um i'm a i'm a i'm a, I'm a guy i uh i uh mm, very good very good yeah yeah i i play a lot of uh pen and paper role-playing games uh play plenty of video games uh play music uh self-taught wow. and programming all those kind of things um, okay. I've got two dogs. I, uh, you know, there's there's plenty to know. Cease, cease. Dogs? What what are the names of these good girls and boys? Um, well, I have a, a beagle named Barney and I have oh, Barney uh, the Beagle. A very a very long West Highland Terrier named Wizard. Wizard. <laughs> All right. Uh does Wizard have a really low HP pool? Like one attack from a goblin might hurt him um yeah yeah i guess if his hp pool is his temper that's that's true oh he will lose it i see yeah yeah he's kind of ferocious but uh he's he's also very sweet i don't i don't mean to trash talk my dog i mean i don't think anyone would like to purposely trash talk their dog but it seems like small dogs tend to you know be very angry he's feisty yeah feisty is a good word Feisty, I like that. He has some sass. He has an he has a rude attitude, but he's still a cool boy. Indeed. Um, right, right, right. So uh, I I heard that you you like a little uh, pen and paper RPGs. Uh, do you have any recommendations for some of your favorites? Um, I played D anD D forever. Um, and I mm-hmm. think the new five E rules are, are perfect. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of fourth edition, but uh. I think they've kind of brought it back with the the new edition. It's very easy to pick up and play, um, so right. I stick to that. But then, then occasionally I'll dip my toes into to other games like Chaosium has Call of Cthulhu, and I really enjoy mm-hmm. that. Um, as far as like independent published things, I'm I'm not sure. I've played one game of the uh, like Fantasy Flights, Dark Heresy, 40k kind of RPG thing. Right, right, right. So, so um, it's it's not a shocker to me that you like Dungeons and Dragons, mostly because I've seen your posts on social media. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I really want to ask is that: Are you more of a dungeon master or a player uh, kind of D and D person? I love to play, but I I usually end up running games. Like, uh, oh, I've, I've isn't that so true? Yep. <laughs> like I, I relish any time I get to play, but. Uh, Often, often I'm I'm DMing games, right? So, did DMing games uh, kind of kickstart your want to make your own video game? Like, you know, I was able to craft an experience in a tabletop RPG. Did that kind of lead you towards, like, you know, making fight or a robot named fight? Can we just call it fight? You can call I, it. You can call it fight. You can call it uh, arf. It abbreviates in a funny way. Um, so, Arf? <laughs> yeah, a lot of folks will call it ARMF, um, at least okay, in Discord. Because I was going to do ARNF as the abbreviation, <laughs> but apparently it's canonical. The president himself said, you can call the game ARNF. Arf. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but All yeah, right. to, your, to your question, um, I, I kind of started doing game development and playing D&D around the same time. Like it was all in the in the early '90s, around the time that uh, like Doom was released on PC, and um, like that that uh, original well, not the original box set, but that early like '93 Red Dragon on the cover, Lee Greenwood art D and D box set set came out, and I I, mm-hmm. I was just deeply into games at that time. So. I see, I see. So it, it it kind of happened at the same time. Um, you know, I really, really... So I'm a programmer myself, uh, in case you didn't know. I actually graduated with a degree in computer science. Oh, nice. So it's kind of... It's always really interesting to hear about people who are self-taught programmers and then also released a video game because it's so ironic that me, as a person who studied in college for years to make video games, has never made a video <laughs> game. <laughs> But but you, who taught yourself how to program, ended up releasing a very good game. So I, I think this is a this is a testament to uh, simply your dedication and your discipline over mine. Because honestly, <laughs> I'm a terrible human being. Like, like let's oh be no, real don't here. don't put yourself down. I, I'm I'm sure you specialized, uh, and and probably probably uh, when, when you go to school, you you said programming. 
computer science computer with a science. specialization in interactive multimedia, which is fancy for video games. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. right. There's no saving me. There's no saving me from, <laughs> from this. Like, thank you so much, Matt, for trying to save my face, but it is just... You know what? I fell through the cracks. Now I help make board games for a living. That's well, that's a pretty sweet enough. gig, too. Right, right. It's a pretty sweet gig. Uh, so, what's your favorite genre of music? Um, I like a lot of uh, like progressive rock, especially like late 70s kind of progressive rock, like Can, Yes, King Crimson. Um, and then I listen to actually a lot of like uh, noise rock and some post-punk and some stuff like that, too. So, uh, I see. Uh, do you make music? I, I do. I actually made all the music that's in A Robot Named Fight. Um, mm -hmm. And I've, I've been in several bands. I play bass guitar and a, a couple other instruments poorly, but bass is the main you know, one. Matt, Matt Bittner, a uh, patented cool dude. I was in a <laughs> band once, you know. You know, honestly, this is very interesting because when you said you liked, like prog rock and noise rock and all that stuff, and then you said you made the... Honestly, I didn't know you made the OST to fight. <laughs> um, <laughs> But when I listened to it, I was like, okay, makes sense. Like, when you said those two things in succession, yeah, I was like, okay, makes sense. <laughs> right. Uh, the music in Fight is very, like, I, I would say high energy, very uh, metal, um, which makes sense because it's, you know, a game where you're a robot who's made of metal fighting flesh. It, it makes kind of sense to me. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very, very, very good thing. Honestly... Is it bad if I say that my favorite genre of music is really bad hip hop anime remixes on YouTube? No, like, no, that's a that's a perfectly valid uh, uh, choice of favorite genre. Jeez, Matt, you're you're so kind and considerate. First trying to save my face, now <laughs> saving my face yet what, again. What's your you favorite know? hip hop uh, remix? Anime hip hop remix is that is that the the term? R right, right. So uh, usually it's they take anime songs and remix it with uh, hip hop R and B songs, right? Okay. So there there's one where it's called Hold Up Orange, where they remixed uh, Kendrick Lamar's Hold Up with Orange from this anime called Toradora. Uh, uh -oh. It's actually pretty cool. I will send it to you after this podcast. Everybody listening. To this podcast, I cannot play a sample of it because we will get copyright stricken. So, um, unfortunately, no, but hopefully, yes. Well, I'll Matt, definitely give it a listen. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you so much. For uh, for once, a guest does not make fun of my hobbies, you know? You know, usually when I have Jackie on this show, who's another employee at Level 99 Games, she'd be like, what the heck are you even talking about? So you're the first nice person I've had on this show. So thank you so much. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, Jackie, oh, Jackie man. likes her her anime. That's actually where I met Jackie. Um, at Yomacon. In an anime? At a, well, at an anime convention. Okay, I thought you were both in an anime, and I almost lost. No, my mind. no, no. I've never done voice acting. You can you can probably tell oh. from my voice. Um, I don't know. You have a pretty nice voice. It has it has a nice baritone carry to it. Oh, well, so thank you. Right, right. So you met you met Jackie at Yomacon. That's that's correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, what year was which year's Yomacon or something? I don't I, know. I think this years. was I think this was 2016. It might have been 2017. It, it was 2017 because it was right after uh, A Robot Name Fight came out. Um, right. So were you there to promote it? Yeah, I was there to promote it, and that's actually the same year that I uh, met Brad as well. We were on a, a panel together together what was that panel <laughs> it was a uh, game design actually we were just talking about getting into the uh i mean we never met and then we were we were both kind of giving our answers and and a lot of them lined up uh some of them didn't but but i think most of them did so it was right it was right. cool to do that with him would you say that the differences were irreconcilable and that's why we never speak of brad ever again or were, were, you, were you like cool uh no comment no, no, oh. no, I'm joking. Uh, it was it was very cordial. No, it's all it was all very good. Oh, that's good to hear. I actually didn't know that you met Brad way, way earlier. So it, it kind of starts, 
you know, sets the seeds, plants the seeds for what eventually becomes a co- collaboration between your company and Brad's, right? That's, uh, which is that's correct, yeah. Right, which is the topic for this episode. And speaking of the topic for this episode, we've learned a little bit more about Matt, but let's get to the meat of the stuff after the ad break. So, everybody, see you after the ad break. Ho, 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 it's me, deep-voiced, fancy Santa Claus, and I'm here to tell you that if you're still looking for a gift for your loved ones this holiday season, you can check the description out below for the Level 99 Games Holiday Gift Guide. In it, you can see all sorts of games for all members of the family, whether it's the competitive ones or the casual ones who just want to sit around, have a laugh, and play some games. Or, if you have any video gamers in the family, you can check the description down below for links to a robot named Fight, which is still on sale by the time this episode comes out. So please, get that and support Matt and support Level 99 Games. Thank you so much. Fancy Santa Claus slash Marco, out. And welcome back from the break. Hopefully you enjoyed that little tidbit with probably me voicing some weird pirate again. Um, Sorry, Matt, if you didn't know, I tend to do silly voices for the ads. (laughs) (laughs) Right. um, Usually pirate related or something because, you know... We always go, what a steal! Yar, har, har! I know, see. Just... Are there a lot of pirates in advertising now? Is that a... Uh, yeah, it's... Yeah, they're they're all pretty good at it, you know. Um, <laughs> but they, they, you know, they had to give up a lot to be that good. Some would even say it costs them an arm and a leg. Oh, oh I get it. Hey, hey, but... Poor puns and pirates aside, let's talk a little bit more about the main topic for this episode. A robot named Fight in Exceed, or as I'd like to call it now, a robot named Exceed. A a (laughs) Fight named Exceed? An Exceed named Fight. Hmm. What should we call this, Matt? Um... uh, An Exceed named Fight? A robot in Exceed? Uh... Arm Phoenix. I don't know. It's a lot of words. It's a lot of words. It's a, it's a lot of words. So let's just say the fight in exceed. Yeah, yeah. Fight, so, uh, fight's coming to exceed. Right. Fight's coming to exceed. In fact, he's already in it. Whoa. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Uh, so uh, for people who don't know, uh, which is really odd, because why are you watching this episode if you don't know it yet? Uh, and, you know, if you read the title of this episode, then you should know that a robot named Fight or Fight. Is it Fight Smith? This is something that we actually did in playtesting. Is it Fight Smith? It is. It is Fight Smith. In fact, there are several Fight Smiths. There's, uh, there's, there's a, a, a large number of Fight Smiths. Hey, wait. So every time you die, you're a new one. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, good to know. Does this also imply that there is an infinite number of tutorial Smiths there, who die every time you talk to them? There are very many tutorial Smiths. Yeah. And they all kind of like, uh, I guess you could say share a bit of a mind, but uh, they, they are distinct. Ah, I see. So there's like a pseudo fight Smith mind or whatever, like a hive mind. It's something esque. like that. Yeah. Hive mind esque. I think that I think that's a fair characterization. Yeah. All right. Good to know. So um, fight and exceed. I'm really excited. So uh, Matt, uh, just some context for you. I actually worked a lot on uh, the development of Fight for Exceed, which involves a lot of the playtesting and trying to make sure that the feel of the character shines through. So I've sent you some of Fight's cards. Uh, So let's talk a little bit more about it. What do you think is the essence of a robot named Fight the video game or maybe even Fight Smith the character himself? Is it himself or itself? Uh, Let's go with itself. I I, I think itself. Uh, I I call I call him him often. I'll probably call him him in this interview, but but I think it's more accurate. Right. So what what's what's fight all about? The game or the character? Uh, Arf is about uh kind of endless replayability and 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 kind of building or kidding out your character through um some some like games of chance and through discovering um lots of different items, and then you have to kind of right. manage various resources to to kind of assemble. Uh, the correct combo of items to allow you to uh, get to the the uh, final boss and defeat it. Um, right. It's also, I mean, it's it's about uh, meat creatures. It's about uh, robots. It's about powerful weapons. 
all that's I think captured at least in the cards I've seen. Uh, I really appreciate like the the kind of fleshy border on the cards. But um, oh my gosh, the 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 graphic design for the cards is so grotesquely fight. I love it. Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. Actually, some of the cards don't show it, but uh, some of the other cards have in the upper right corner. There's a closed eye. That eye actually opens in some of the arts. So it's. Oh, cool. It's really grotesque and creepy. Exactly like the fight art that you would expect. <laughs> it's very, very good to hear you say that a big portion of fight is all about assembly and management, right? Because that's essentially what a lot of the game is all about. Uh, it's, and it's, it's an assembly of tools, and it's also a management of your resources to be able to even use those tools. Yeah, I think that's a fair... Yeah. Right. So when it, ca- when it came to designing the character, actually... Uh, that ended up being the ethos for the character. Uh, the character's ability allows uh, it <laughs> to essentially spend resources to fuel a bunch of powerful weapons that they that it has at his disposal. Gosh, this is difficult. I'm so sorry. I'll keep calling him he at some point. That's fine. Uh, he, uh, yeah, yeah. I saw I saw in a lot of the cards that that not only are there like they're all modeled. I guess have different different items that you get in the game. But they also right. kind of have like a little sub item. Like uh, I saw where the, the the card for lightning gun also has like kind of an arachnomorph bonus, or a um, right. The card for uh, retreating bolts has a deadlock boots. Um, the lower part is called a boost, and you can actually use it to perform utility effects or to modify your attack. So like the deadlock boots make it so that you're unmovable. Uh, so if you, for example, want to do a retreating bolts but don't want to move while using your retreating bolts, you can use your deadlock boots and then use a retreating bolts so that you don't have to retreat while using retreating bolts. You want to hear me say the word retreating again, Matt? Yeah, can, one more time. Retreating bolts. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So um, this this actually ended up helping us model a little bit of what the game's all about, right? Because it's not just about your weapons. It's about all of these auxiliary orbs and all of these other items that kind of synergize with your weapons. So uh, that was really, really useful for modeling that. Um, But, Matt, this is an interview about you, not an interview about me. So let me ask you something. Uh, How deep was your involvement uh, with with us in in, in the sense of, how did this happen? (laughs) Like, how did a robot named Fight get into Exceed? What was the process? I was at PAX East. And I, I think a, a mutual friend of mine and, and Jackie's named Crows introduced me to Chris. And uh, while, I, while you all were uh, showing off a variety of games, I think at PAX East, I was able to sit down and play, um, like get the teaching round of Exceed. Um, right. And then later that evening, we all went out for drinks and we kind of we kind of kept in contact. And... Um, I think by the end of that convention, we, we we basically both agreed like let's let's try and make this happen. It'd be really cool to see uh, to see fight appear in um, a level ninety nine game, which ended up being exceed. And then right um, from there, I don't know. We've talked about doing some other things. Then I, I don't know that any of that's official. Oh, yet, but, spicy! Does yeah. that mean we get the level ninety nine games character in fight? Oh, I, I can't. I can't say any anything. I can't make any promises to that effect, but yeah, that's that's been explored. Oh, oh, that's that's so interesting. <laughs> you know, but one one thing I really want to ask you is I assume you enjoyed Exceed. Right? Did you enjoy Exceed? I did. Are are we just pretending you like Exceed? <laughs> no, no, I did enjoy Exceed. It it did a great job, I think, of just like modeling what a fighting game feels like. I've only had a chance to I did that one test game at uh, Pax East, and then I've played one game since I uh, you all sent me the uh, the boxes. So I'm not good at it yet. I wouldn't say, but what I've played of it's really enjoyed. Like it's very much like pick up and go. You're 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 able to just kind of sit down and play it. There's not uh, it's not like a CCG, I guess. Like it, right. it's all self contained. Yeah, it's a it's a very interesting thing. Are you a fan of CCGs? I I am actually. I, I play a great deal of like Magic the Gathering. Um, I used to play the old Highlander CCG back when that was around. Right, uh, but it's it's over because you killed everyone, and now you're the only. Now one, I'm the right? only one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's... that's how that card game went out of business. They don't make it. Right. Anymore. Right. Right. You know, you'd think that a card game wherein you have to 
absorb your opponent's immortality uh, would be easily phased out, right? I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's illegal. I think we we duped you because fight's actually one of the harder characters to play in the game, <laughs> and and I think it's a bit unfair because we it's like uh, Mr. Mr. Matt Bittner newbie at exceed now his 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 character your character is actually difficult to play. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I believe that I actually haven't gotten the uh, uh, I haven't gotten the uh, the fight cards yet. I've only played with oh, the Street gosh. Fighter characters, so I guess I'll, I'll get to I guess I'll get to experience that for myself here soon. Right. Because you will get them eventually, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's gonna be. I'm so sorry. If you need help, please hit me up. Oh, I will. It's I all will good. help you. Um, right. And you know what? To be fair, if you do need to play some games of Exceed and can't find anybody, hit me up. I'll play with you. That would be fun. We should do that. The uh, right, right. From we, what I understand, the uh, the way fight works, like you don't, like you you depend on on sacrificing your cards to uh, uh, be able to, like, use or boost all your abilities, right? Right. Uh, yes, because it's kind of like your energy mechanic in the actual game, right? Sh- sure, yeah. Um, uh, do you think that's an accurate representation of how you should actually play a robot named Fight the video game? Potentially, yes. Uh, I think I think in a robot named Fight, you, you always start very weak and underpowered, and it's you have to, you have to kind of be careful about uh maximizing your strength and then you then you can kind of go ham like the late game in a robot named fight you're usually able to um to just wreck everything in sight but it takes a while to get there so if fight plays like that then certainly right then then it's accurate because fight also so in exceed right there's the exceed mode like when you flip the character mm-hmm. uh fight's flip is godlike <laughs> like if fight ever gets to flip you probably lose at this point because um it's very powerful. So yes, in the late game fight will basically steamroll you because now like he flips and then now he has seven orbs and then his attack deals 15 damage or whatever. So it's it can get very, very scary. All right, nice. Matt. Last question. Okay. Uh, how was the collaborative process? How involved were you in the development of fight? Right. I'm pretty sure that you had to say, hey, yes put fight in the game uh but how close were you to the development of it or was it more of uh here's my blessing uh chris and everybody else do it and then just make sure that i see it before you print it um i i'd say it's somewhere in the middle like i didn't uh have any direct involvement in in any of the game design or on the cards or anything but uh everybody was really great about uh like running things by me and i i had several meetings with chris and jackie where we were able to talk about like um, art direction and um, like lore and how certain things were presented. I think um, there's, there's flavor text on each of the cards, right? Um, uh, I, on some of them. Yes. Okay. I, I wrote a bit of that. I know. And sent it to Jackie. Oh. Um, but it was, it was nice. It was a good, I really enjoyed the, the, the way we collaborated. Like I never felt like I had to do a whole lot, but I felt involved at every step of the way. And that's ideal, right? right. Uh, not a lot of work, but you feel nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> right. Uh, and that was a lie, by the way, Matt, because I have one more question for you. Uh, did you, f- are you happy with the final fight? Um, not the final fight, the video game final fight. I'm talking about the final version of fight your character fight. I, I enjoy final fight the video game, but uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the 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 cards look amazing. The art looks good. I might I might have to talk to your artist. Uh, I really love the oh. art, and and as far as I know, the the uh, the design uh, matches the game. It, it looks really cool. You know what, Matt? You're really cool. Oh, thank you. And as much as I would love to keep talking to such a cool person like you, we need to move on to our next and final segment, uh, which I call, hey, let's level in for a bit, where we talk about some announcements, some updates, and some plugs we want to do. And usual, I always let the guest go first. So Matt, if you want to plug anything right now, please. Um, Well, I certainly want to plug Fight in uh, Exceed. It's February, right? It's coming out in February. Right, it's it should and be shipping can, in. It should February. be shipping in February. You can pre-order right now. Um, beyond that, uh, sometime in the middle of this month, I'm not going to stick a exact date on it just yet, but very Ooh, soon, spicy. Uh, there will be a new update for a robot named Fight. It's free; you don't have to pay anything for it. But it sees the addition of a new area called the Crystal Mines, 
as well as two new bosses, 12 new items, um, and a lot of other cool features. Like you can now add a uh, mole men to deathmatch and you're able to, they kind of, they kind of take on the role of bots. Um, and you can get swarmed uh-huh. by up to like 30 mole men in deathmatch. It's a really fun way to play. <laughs> um, especially, uh, Steam has like their, I forget what they call it, but like you can, remote, remote, play. remote couch. Remote couch? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Play. There like you, you, can co- you can couch go up over the internet, and that makes that incredibly fun. So that's all happening. Oh. The game will be on sale on both platforms sometime in the middle of this month. Again, I'm not going to say exact dates, but uh, that's that's the next big thing for a robot name fight. Right, right, right. Uh, and by both platforms, you do mean PC and Switch. That's yes. that's correct. Uh, well, PC, Mac, and Linux, um, uh, all, the, all the platforms supported on Steam. And then uh, Switch, Nintendo Switch. Right. Absolutely, absolutely fair. Also, um, quick note that we are recording this episode in December, like mid-December, like December 11. So when Matt says middle of this month, he means probably sometime in December. Uh, just just making sure, because this episode that's might a, come out a little bit That's a very good later. point. There's a very good chance by the time this episode comes out, uh, these things will have already happened. The game will be on sale and the update will be out, so... Right, so if you are listening to this and a robot named Fight has already gotten its update and it's on sale, get it now. It's a good game. I'm terrible at it, but it's still a good game. <laughs> Don't blame the game, blame the player, right? You can um, blame me. I was gonna... <laughs> I don't think I can blame you for creating a game that is that requires some amount of player skill to finish. Um, <laughs> right, right. So I was going to do some plugs, but you already plugged the thing for me. Uh, again, reiterate, uh, after you buy some fight on your Switch or whatever computer platform you use, feel free to buy fight and exceed. You can still pre-order from a shop. Links for it can be found in the description down below. By the way, uh, I'll link the Steam page to uh, a robot named Fight in the description down below as well so that you can see whether or not the update is out and whether or not you can get the game at a discounted price. Uh, would you happen to know what that discounted price is, Matt? Uh, it will be 90% off. Wow. Yes. That, yar, that's a steal. <laughs> I, I, I'm crazy with deals. I've lost my mind uh, over these deals. <laughs> Head over to Fight's Deal Shack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are we talking about? Thanks. Matt, thank you so much. You've been a joy to have on the podcast. Thank you, Marcus. And as much as I would love to keep talking to you, we have to sadly end. As usual, that's been me, your host, Marco DeSantos, also known as Mechanic. And with me has been the God King of Morningstar Game Studios himself, Matt Bittner. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you, World of Indians. Thank you, and good night. Happy gaming. The new Level Cap podcast is produced by Level 99 Games. Join us next week for more game talk and shenanigans. Thank you for listening.